Now, <clears throat> as a physical therapist, I mean, I see probably 15% of my patients have shoulder, shoulder problems. Um, what are the typical courses of treatment? So you see somebody has shoulder pain. Take us through what, what your thoughts are in terms of where you go with these people for treatment. Uh, all right. Well, I, I like to tell my patients that the, the shoulder is a very forgiving joint. It wants to get better. Okay. Other joints in the body, the knee, the ankle, where you walk on them all day long, sometimes they, they're, they're harder to get better because they're harder to rest them. But with the shoulder, it responds very well to physical therapy. And so that's, that's uh, basically my mainstay of, uh, of treatment. I would say uh, without a doubt that um, uh, eighty percent of the patients that, that I uh, take care of and see, uh, at least eighty percent get better just with what we call conservative treatment. And that would be physical therapy, um, uh, anti-inflammatory medicines, um, icing techniques, mm -hmm. um, and then transition to what we call a home exercise program where people are taught the, the exercises by um, physical therapists like yourself and then they transition to doing those exercises independently at home on their own. Great. Now there are some instances where you need to mobilize the joint, correct? Where you may put them in a sling for a while. What are, what are some of those problems that might develop? Well, we usually find that we need to use a sling and immobilize when someone's had um, a, a trauma to their shoulder, so a fracture. Um, a case in point, uh, the collarbone. The collarbone's part of the shoulder. It's, it's certainly one of the most frequently broken bones in the, in the body, especially when you're a child. Mm -hmm. And so they, whereas oftentimes we can put uh, broken bones in a cast, you can't put the shoulder in a cast. <laughs> so uh, we use a sling, and that's our form of immobilization. So fractures, broken bones, they commonly require um, uh, uh, use of a sling or immobilization. And also dislocations as well, right? The exactly. ones that kind of come out of the socket. Certainly in the early phases of, of the treatment, uh, we want to allow that shoulder joint to calm down after it's been dislocated. So we, we keep it in a sling to allow the, the soft tissues to, to, to heal and mend before we start to strengthen the rotator cuff to get the shoulder back into shape. And one of the balances that we have, a physician and physical therapist, is trying to find that happy medium between a period of immobilization for healing and a period that we need to move them before things get really stiff. And we find that in the shoulder, that that's sometimes can be difficult. Correct? Yeah, that, that's an art. That really yeah. is an art. And, and it requires a lot of communication between the, the, the physician and the therapist as mm -hmm. far as making sure that people are getting the right, getting the right milestones. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and everybody's different. You know, some people need uh, the sling for a while. Some people don't need it for too long at all. Are there some other medical problems that add to the problems with the shoulder? In other words, people with diabetes or thyroid problems in terms of their health history, th does that matter in terms of their injury and their potential for recovery? Um, yes, it does. There's uh, those two specific um, uh, phenomena or disease process, diabetes and, and thyroid disease, are associated with people who have a tendency to have a stiff shoulder. And so someone who has an injury who has those two specific type of diseases um, or, or disease problems, will we're going to have a tendency to be a little bit more aggressive with their emotion to try to prevent them from, from freezing up. Um, and then there's, there's other uh, uh, disease processes that can affect the shoulder too. People have osteoporosis are more susceptible to, to having um, breaks in their shoulder or fractures. And those are, you know, those are also uh, issues of concern. Okay. So now you get this patient that <clears throat> is doing okay in physical therapy, but then they're still having residual problems or, um, you know, pain is severe. When, what is the, the, the course in terms of when you decide that maybe surgery is really indicated? Well, we'd like to have people exposed to a conservative treatment program uh, initially, um, and, that, and those are the individuals who encompass the, that 80% that get better without having to do anything. Mm -hmm. And so there's, uh, I, would, I would anticipate that for the average or typical shoulder problem, people usually are exposed to somewhere between four to six weeks of physical therapy to try to rehabilitate and get things strong. If they're continuing to have discomfort, they aren't making the milestones that, that we're, we're looking for, um, then there's other treatments we can do. We'll uh, sometimes give them an injection, a steroid injection to calm down inflammation. Um, we'll uh, try changing medicines. But if, if uh, four to six weeks has gone by and there hasn't been any improvement, typically by that time we've gotten an MRI test and um, we see what, uh, what, what, why they're not getting better. Mm -hmm. And if we see that they haven't gotten to the point where they're getting better, maybe they do have a, a tear that's formed. Maybe there's um, the, the rubbing or the friction, the, impinging, uh, the impingement that we talked about uh, earlier hasn't responded to the, to the conservative treatment. So then we start th uh, thinking about doing surgical procedures.